So you're probably coming to this video thinking, oh, I'm gonna watch a brown man lose a bet and lose all of his life savings. Well, you're wrong. My $28 is staying in my pocket. So I got $20 in my pocket. Because this is the actual worst reality TV show I've ever seen Barn on. I can guarantee you that. And I have dedicated 10 hours to watching this. Yes! I watched the whole thing because so many people have asked me to do a video on this that I caved and I watched one episode and I was like, oh, this is so bad. I need to watch another. Eight episodes later, I'm sitting there with a hangover like, oh my God, it's Wednesday already. I started on Sunday. Anyway, that's another problem for another time. But the thing is, this is the worst show that I've ever seen. And if you don't know what show I'm talking about, it's called The Ultimatum. The Ultimatum is a show done by Netflix and the people who did Love is Blind. That's right. If you ever thought Love is Blind was bad, watch it and then watch The Ultimatum. The Ultimatum makes Love is Blind look like Citizen Kane. It's really, really that bad. The hosts, Nick Lachey and Vanessa Lachey return. And I'm pretty sure it's easy to tell why Netflix stock is going down after watching this. Just to give you an idea of the concept, The Ultimatum is about people in their mid-twenties who have been dating for one to two years. One of the couple does not like the position they're in, so they give the other person an ultimatum. Either marry me or break up with me. Which in itself is already toxic, but what happens when you have another five couples doing the exact same thing? That's right, you get swingers. Everybody just starts banging each other because that's, that's how we resolve issues these days. So that's the show. There's a lot of couples who say either marry me or break up and then they get three weeks to date someone else. I'm as lost as you are. If you clicked on the video and you have no idea what's going on, hi, I'm Leo, or just a brown person, doesn't really matter. At the end of the video, if you like it, then do subscribe if you're going to stick around for that long because this is going to be probably the longest video I've ever done. It's a comprehensive and full review of every single episode of The Ultimatum. Why? Because I hate my life apparently. Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon has been such an amazing sponsor for this channel for the past couple of years and I'm sure you know by now they come with optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. But the earbuds themselves were specifically modified to seamlessly fit the curvature of the human ear whether big or small. This took countless design iterations to make sure they will not budge so they truly are a universal fit for any ear type. Raycon gives you 8 hours of continuous playtime on a single charge plus a 30 32 hour battery life when you use its charging case. Did you know you can actually charge the case itself on a wireless charging pad? Damn, Raycon really thought of everything. Priced at around half the cost of other premium audio brands, it doesn't surprise me that Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 49,000 5 star reviews. These earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. Head to buyraycon.com 16leo for 15% off your order today. Thanks Raycon. While you're at it, do follow me at 16leo underscore if you want to message me any other ideas that would be great someone gave me this idea so you can go to hell like i said i took 10 hours to watch the footage then another 10 to compile it cut it down and react to it so don't say i don't do things for you guys all right i knew hunter was the one for me when we went on our first trip he was so patient just let me run the show so that is how the show starts it just thrusts us into the meat of it we have two of the first contestants alexis and hunter and i'm going to do a pros and cons list for every single person because i don't think there's even one person that is redeeming in the show there might be one everyone else is just the worst piece of garbage ever and let's start with the queen of trash alexis Con. I think you can already see that she's she's controlling and I'll back it up later but I'm gonna put down controlling as a con so mm. eyes on the prize right <laughs> I basically told Hunter we either get engaged or we break up so this is the problem with the show uh, and it's right at the start you have contestants who are so volatile and in their 20s as I've said when you're in your 20s you're not fully developed and maybe Maybe you are. In this show, people have been dating for approximately one to two and a half years. I don't think it's long enough to start holding ultimatums personally. I know it's to each their own. But at the same time, you have five or six couples who are volatile enough to pose ultimatums to their partners and then go on a show in which the hosts have no idea what they're doing. Do you not see the shit show that is about to unfold? 
I feel like this is a literal recipe for disaster. If you were to open up a book of cooking and you looked up disaster, you'd find the ultimatum as the recipe. We're at a stage in our relationship and I'm at a stage in my life where I can answer that question for us. But you're not ready to answer the question because, or else you would have already answered it. Okay, that's fair. So that's Hunter. He's a little bit of a, how do I say this nicely? A sump. He's a, he's a little bit of that, but he's also pretty nice. So I'm not going to give him a positive or negative for either of them yet. The next couple we have is Madeline and Kobe. They've been dating one and a half years. I have owned socks for longer than that. I'm just saying, if you're going on a show and it's been a year and a half, is that enough to make an informed decision for the rest of your life? Some people may say yes. A lot of people would say no, especially if you don't have the other aspects of your life together. The only reason I'm even saying this, or the only reason people are like, are you ready, is because the commitment is for life. And if you're not willing or ready or understand the insane obstacles that will come your way, maybe don't go on a reality show to decide whether you want to be with someone for the rest of your life. I don't know if that really always works. You know what I mean? And you're going to see, neither of these two people are good. We met in college. I was working at a bar. She comes walking through the doors. As soon as I saw her, I was like blown away. I just want to be known as her man. Okay. So, you know, initially when I was looking at Kobe, I'm like, wow, he's, you know, really, he's a handsome dude. And I'm sure people at first glance would be like, wow, Kobe's cool. Not really. Not really. Uh, so you might be thinking, oh, Madeline's cool. Not really. No. Do I think that there's a possibility that I could be happy with somebody else? Yes. It's an old ultimatum. It's either, you know, she marries me or moving on. Oh my god, we just started the show and you can already see Kobe crying. It looks like he's been in the bathroom or just been like, why doesn't she like me? For like 10, 20 minutes, his eyes are red. Oh, his pupils are so dilated. What has he been smoking? I just, I don't know. At first glance, just looking at the show, you can see that maybe the contestants need something other than a reality check. Maybe therapy, maybe maybe to better themselves. I don't know if Nick Lachey and Vanessa Lachey will solve your problems. If anything, they will create more problems in your life by coming to them. And if she can't see that, I need to find somebody else who can. Someone in your relationship has issued an ultimatum. You're the one I want to be with. I can't, these songs are just, I hate it. Whoever's singing these songs is like, you wanna be with? Oh, can can we put that on, on Spotify? Nope, it's going to the ultimatum. Okay, but it's also on Spotify. Nope, nobody else is gonna hear this. Shanique, you issued the ultimatum to Randall. Planning to build together in a way that includes marriage. You think you're ready for this step because you're I the do. one that issued the ultimatum, right? I do, right? Yeah. yeah, I do. And I think he is too, he just doesn't know. <laughs> <Whoa. Whoa. laughs> yeah, my I'm looking I'm looking like Nick's looking right now. That's Shanique and uh Randall. Randall is maybe the only decent person in this whole thing. You're each gonna experience two different visions of what your married life could be. Take a good look around at each other. You're gonna find out if there are people here other than the person you're with that actually could be a fit for you. Yes! Oh my god, I don't... What is wrong with you, woman? Of course, I feel like if there's seven billion people in the world, chances are you in your lifetime you'll be attracted to more than one person. There comes a time in everyone's life where they're like, oh, I might be attracted to more than one person, but the reason I'm with you is because I like you. This show is literally either marry me or never talk to me again. It's, it's literally an ultimatum. It's not, can I have more time to think about this decision? I'm just working on other things before I can settle down with you. In 2022, why are we posing so much emphasis on marriage? I don't get it. I really want to be married, by the way. This is someone who's fully for marriage, and I still don't get why they're doing it. I, I always said I was going to be that girl that would never give a man an ultimatum and it was I was 29 and she I was, was like, lying this was just... I always said that I was never gonna give a man an ultimatum she was lying get me out of your shit. she was lying five years later things changed but look what it got me hey look what it got me hey hey hey, hey man I, I I don't want any trouble you gave me an ultimatum I said yes can you can you just release my family tell my sister I love her please don't ever 
Are you the real Batman? Just, just don't hurt me. This is every time I see Nick, he just looks like he's in pain. If I'm being completely candid and transparent, we took a break, but it took seeing somebody else and me realizing I don't mind the things that I thought bugged me or were yeah. holding me back. So tonight is your last night together as a couple. I get it. Uh, Vanessa's like, it worked for me, so it'll work for you. Not everything is going to work for everyone. This is just how relationship works. There are like a million factors. That's what makes love such a beautiful thing is that the myriad of factors work in both a positive and negative way. A story of love can be different or the same. There's just so many elements to someone's personal love story that you can't fathom or possibly recreate. So just because it worked for you in 98 degrees over there, it doesn't mean that it's going to work for these people. Let's choose a new partner. You'll move in together for three weeks in a trial marriage. That's, that's not enough. That's, this show sucks more than I thought. The suck factor of the show is like a, is like a porno person. This is so much suck. Really? Three weeks? So you're telling me they're either going to marry someone who they dated for two years, maybe two and a half years, or they're going to fall in love with someone else in three weeks. Could, could Netflix possibly have a better budget to maybe extend the time period? So if we're going to do this, we'll do it right. I would like more time. If, if that was the decision, I either marry someone for two years or meet someone for three weeks and marry them, I would very likely choose the person I came with because I don't know the person for more than three weeks. That's so stupid. Then you're going to go through exactly the same experience with the person you arrived here with. Oh, a three more weeks with my partner. Ooh, what the sh This is great. Three more weeks with a partner that I'm already having issues with. That should be fun. And after the three weeks with the new person who I'm banging, oh, that sh Hey, hey. Why were you banging that other person? Because we went on the show. The show really came from the depths of hell and it should have stayed there. Many of you are gonna feel like you're falling in love. Some of you may find yourself in love with two people. That's the whole point. Absence can make the heart grow fonder or absence can make the heart grow absent. Uh, there's my airhead Nick. Nick, your boy. There's my airhead Nick, yeah. Absence can make the heart grow fonder or absence to make the heart grow absent. I thought of that all by myself. <laughs> Whether or not we end up together, it's not gonna be the same. I feel kind of sick to my stomach about how real this experience is, but I do have attraction to Randall. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I zoned out for a attraction second. I zoned Randall. back in to hear that. It's been one day and Madeline's already like, I have an attraction to Randall. He's just, he's got something Colby doesn't. Uh, can I put a can I put up Madeline con section already trying to get away from her partner? Yeah, I'm willing to explore Randall a little bit. My name is April and I'm giving my boyfriend Jake an ultimatum. I just want a ring and I want a baby with you. Now. No. <laughs> I really want to see where this takes us. Sorry, did she say a baby? Yeah. Did she throw that in there? April, who's 23, is a self-proclaimed firecracker. She doesn't have an off switch and doesn't tend to understand people. Do you have off switch? Yeah, it's right next to the prostate. Or is that the on switch? No. The partner that she's with is Jake, who's 25 or 26, and he's still trying to get his life together. The problem is April wants to settle down and Jake doesn't yet. It's not a huge problem because Jake loves her. And if she's willing to wait just a little bit longer, he's not going anywhere. I think it'll be fine. But for some reason, they make this an issue. She wants to get married right now. But this is the problem with the show. Do you not understand? It's a, it's a lot of people who are rushing other people and everybody moves at different speeds. You just cannot rush your partner. If you're a good partner, you, you would do the opposite, actually. The chances of Jake finding someone as interesting as this personality, good luck. Me just. Mm. <laughs> he really, he was like, oh. You can see the frustration already in Jake's eyes. I want to be 50, 65 years old with you. You're just literally an angel sent from heaven, and I thank God for you every day. Okay, well, if you're going to thank God for him every day, do you, do you need to put a ring around it? If this man is clearly going to be with you and he is the best thing in your life, do you feel like you're going to lose him? Because if he's there with you, you don't have to have that necessity to be like, I need the ring for us to be together. He will marry you in time. Just give it a couple years. Why would you buy me a car? 
Because I care about you. I'm driving this big ass SUV with nobody in the back seat. And like, have I myself. done anything to prevent that? I, now she's crying. April, negatives. Cries every time. And yes, you can cry and be emotional, fine. But the amount of times that April cries in the series, you'll see what I mean. No. no. I've literally dropped everything. Like, given up everything I'm passionate about to make sure you're happy. It's just, I just got out of the military. Uh, con for Jake, dropping everything for someone else. And I know that's a really sweet thing. I get it. It is very sweet to put someone else first, but in a relationship, and I, I, I want to be very clear here, you cannot do that. You have to be selfish. And what I mean by that is, if you are in a relationship now, or this is my advice, which you don't have to take at all, but um, I feel like if you're in a relationship and you want it to last in the long term, you want to be happy. And being happy requires making yourself happy. There's only so much you can make another person happy. If you do that 100% of the time and you're not happy, you're not going to want to stay in the relationship, therefore it's not going to last. And if you want a happy relationship, you have to be happy. So you can't keep on doing things for other people without doing things for yourself. There's got to be compromise, of course, but you definitely have to take measures for yourself and make sure that you're doing things to make you happy within the relationship so that you'll be happy in the long run and that it won't suffer. I feel like a lot of people just don't get that these days for some reason. It saddens me, honestly. But there are some things that we can't get past. Like the kid thing. The... So now we move on to another couple, Nate and Allison. I don't know them too well because they're not actually going to be here long enough. Wink, wink. Nate is the, he's the complete package of douchebag. But uh, the, this couple has a big issue. Nate wants kids and Allison doesn't. At that point, I would suggest splitting up. I think that's too big. I believe in compromise in a relationship. I don't believe in sacrifice. Okay, we're compromising and we're going to have a half kid. You need to find someone who can agree to have children with you. Man, I forgot her name already. I'm going to still call her Allison. I think I'm wrong. She's right. If the issues are too big, you have to find someone who's more like-minded. You can't be that different. Zay has the full package with me because I stay in the gym. So this is now Zay and Ray. Cute, I know. But uh, let's listen to what Ray has to say. But I'm not a rapper. I have a degree, I cook, I clean, and I know how to f And we'll put that in the positive section for Ray. <laughs> Verbatim, I cook, I clean, and I know how to f <laughs> Okay. I might try to find somebody who's the opposite of you and just kind of see how that goes. Why would you pick somebody that's total opposite of me? Tomorrow you're going to be dating other guys and they're like, oh, how do you feel? Ah, Zay, my favorite dude. This guy I'm going to already put up for cons. A Zay fights with everyone. This dude literally picks verbal fights with everyone. I don't know where he got it from, but he just comes out swinging with his mouth. Give me a piggyback. All right, let's go. Go. I got to go change. Go. Get up. I got you. I'm going everywhere you go. Um, uh, April, clingy. That's that's more of a personal pet peeve. I don't like clingy people, but she's literally hanging on to him like a koala bear. I want to make sure you're getting the full experience. Like, don't feel like you have to hold yourself back. I'm not ready to get married. I'm going to enjoy dating other people. I have one life. If you feel that way, why are you dating a man who wants to get married to you? Why didn't you tell him that during the one and a half years he was like, he either married me or I'm going to leave. Just say it. Just be like, okay, well, I can't. I'm sorry. There's nothing wrong with not wanting to get married. She's 24. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't recommend it. If you don't want to, don't tell someone else who wants to that you're going to. Do you know what I mean? Don't lead them on like that. Like, who is April? Like. April is a firecracker. Let me tell y'all something. This bitch is financially stable, okay? I paid for these on my own. I don't need your wallet. I can take care of my own ass. And and that is great, April. I'm gonna put down uh, in the cons column, April doesn't understand finances. Great, you're 23, you paid for your own boobs. Magnificent. Problem is, life is more than just boobs, April. You have to provide for the family. You want kids? They're gonna do more than just sucking on the tatas. You know what I mean? What are those? Are those like they're like Tahitian of... pearls? And now for the whitest conversation in history. That's badass. They look really cool. Yeah. Is there like a story behind it? No, I just no. got at the beach. Okay, I love that. Hey, in that's Florida. Great nice. Okay. As soon as Randall walked in, I felt it. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> hey. 
Randall is very sexy. So to be honest with you, like uh -huh. initially, so already we're getting Madeline thirsting over Randall because Randall is the complete opposite of Kobe. Kobe's like this clean cut, let's just say it, white guy. Randall is this tatted up, you know, African dude. Maybe she really does like him deep down, but she really wants to explore those options, man. You were like the first person that I felt like that's someone that I think that I could be comfortable. Your energy is just yeah. like, I feel like it could match. Yeah. Honestly. He's an, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. He annoys me. This is her first conversation with this dude. And she's like, honestly, Kobe annoys me. He's like, you don't have to talk every five minutes. Do you know what I'm saying? And Randall's sitting there like, yeah. Wow. Madeline just so quick to throw her partner under the bus, huh? Marriage for me is a financial decision and an emotional decision. If Hunter wasn't making enough money that was reasonable, I would walk away. Damn. Actually, I'm not going to put that in the cons thing because her being honest is is pretty good. She should be honest. Uh, if it's a financial decision for her, it is. It is what it is. If that's how you see marriage, I can't really tell you what to do with the marriage. However, I feel like she should tell her partner that because she goes on to say this is the first time she's ever said it. It is, like, in my personal opinion, it's like, I don't think love should be about money, but... To each their own. I'm not gonna say that, oh, okay, you shouldn't do it because I don't. I wanna get to know everybody a little bit better and kinda do an icebreaker. My first question is for the guys. So, now the gang is a little more established. Everyone's went on the friendly dates, little cruiser, bruiser dates, I don't know what they call them, but now they're playing a uh, truth or dare type beat. They're getting a little more saucy. What guy would you be most nervous about your ex living with? Mr. Bean. This guy right here. Really? Just look. Oh, yeah, we got same, the same style? Oh, we got the same everything. And I gotta say the same. This is a good game. Name <laughs> your favorite sex position or take a drink. All right. Uh, that's easy. Mine is called the flaccid scarecrow. It's where I lay down with my hands out on the floor, face down after a long night of work with my ass up. <laughs> uh, no, I like doggy stuff. I like to hit it from the back. My guy. <laughs> <laughs> Guy has most of y'all's attention right now. I would say Kobe. All right. Randall. Randall? Okay. <laughs> oh my god, so honest. I love it. So, uh, the night goes on and Alexis? That's, I just can't remember her name. Crazy witch lady comes over to Kobe and is like, I really like you and she thinks that she has a connection with Kobe. But Kobe's like, oh, you look like a plastic doll gone wrong and I don't want to date you. And she takes this really badly. I don't think I would see a future with you in marriage. Thought our date went well. Clearly, it was all lip service. Bullsh**. Clearly, it was all lip service. Bullsh**. Did you see her eyes move? This is how you know that a girl is angry when she does this with her face. Bullsh**. I don't know what Kobe did. I don't, I cannot recall what this man said to make this woman even react in the way that she did. I feel like sometimes girls get so entitled that they think that just because they like you, um, you have to like them back. And it's something personally that I, I have a pet peeve with because I do have people who think that if they show me attention, I must reciprocate. And it is not the case. If, if I do not like you, I don't like you. I'm allowed to have my own feelings. And I feel like it's just really, I don't know, egocentric of a lot of people to be like, but you should like me because I like you. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately, for both men and women and anyone in between. Everybody's different. I was yeah. a little taken back with, you know, letting me know I could never see a future with you. What took you to that? So that was episode one. Episode two starts off with Alexis coming back to Kobe asking why exactly Kobe said that he would never see a future with her. And he straight up says, I don't find you. I'm not attracted to you, is what he says. And for some reason, this sends her into a spiral of just toxicity. I'm not attracted to you. His ex and me look the most similar of anyone here. Yeah, I mean, you guys are the only two white people, so... Number two, 
I'm not unattractive. I think it was rude and I thought that you were a huge asshole for saying that. I just think you can do like 100% better than Colby. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. So yeah, that's what happens. Alexis, for some reason, calls him an asshole for not being attracted to her because apparently if you're not attracted to someone, that makes you a bad person. And not only does she walk away, but she finds the need to tell his partner that she can do so much better in front of her own partner while saying, I thought I liked him. And this event proceeds to make Kobe cry because he's so, so in love with Alexis. And I'm joking because of course he's not. He actually is crying about not having Madeline. I don't know why. He just, he misses her. And this makes him a con simp. It's been two days, Kobe. It feels like I've been here for two months. I feel so close to multiple of the guys. I can almost like see a future with one or two. How can you see a future? What are you, a fortune teller? Are you a clairvoyant? How are you seeing the future with someone who you have one conversation with and the other person who you've been with for like two years? What is wrong with you? How can you possibly say that? I. I don't even love Colby. I don't like him that much. And I'm still like this poor dude. This poor man has just been crying over you. He's been crying over spoilt, ugly green milk. Because I think that's someone I can definitely spend the next three weeks with. Yeah. But I mean, I don't want it to be a situation where it's like, I'm going through this. I miss Madeline. I want you to actually like you know, choose me. Other lady whose name I forgot and Kobe talk and she's like, I don't want you to cry in the bathroom like a little bitch. <laughs> I heard you, I heard you screaming. You were even hitting the notes. You sound like Sam Smith a little bit. Um, it was really good. But listen, man, you got to really love me. So she was like doing that and Kobe's like, all right, I'll actually try and be with you. How do we get along? How's our sex life? Yeah. So. So like, would you say like you have a super high sex drive? I am normally the initiator. You are? Yeah. Oh, well, we're moving like the speed of light here. Randall and Madeline both seem to be into each other, which, how do I say this by being nice? I would have to be Stevie Wonder to see what other people see in Madeline. So like, what are some of your like off limits when it comes down to like sex? Like some things that you just would never do. I'll tell you what I'd never do. <laughs> I would never ever, ever watch Breaking Bad during sex because she would be so annoyed when I say, let's watch the other episode and get off me. I like to see Jesse Pinkman do things. So that's one of my, that no goes. Nope. <laughs> it's scary to think that I'm thinking about more. What made you attracted to me? What made you attracted to me? What made you attracted to me? Oh lady, oh lady. Madeline, she knows what she's doing. Your voice for some reason, like, <laughs> your voice is like really raspy. <laughs> but oh my God. It, it's, it sounds like sexy. Yeah. And I like your eyes, the way you look at me, um, your body. Attraction was quick. Instant, it was instant. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. As soon as Randall said, your voice sounds sexy, she went from okay to, uh, yes, I'm trying to be sexy for you, Randall. Randall, come back, Randall. Guys, we have like nine more hours of this. You know, he gave me the ultimatum, but my eyes on Randall, my eyes have been on Randall. You know, Randall's someone that I can see a future with. Yeah, that's stupid. And I'll tell you why. It's whenever you get out of a relationship and you get into a new relationship, you have that honeymoon phase where you're like, oh, this person does everything that the other person doesn't. That's because it's the starting initial phase where you're trying to put on your best foot forward and you're trying to attract the person and make sure that you're doing the most. And once you get comfortable, you get comfortable and you start realizing, oh, you're going to have problems. Every relationship has obstacles. You cannot tell me that you've been in one where it's been smooth sailing. <sighs> I just think it's really silly that Madeline is like, yeah, I could see a future with Randall. When you don't even, she probably doesn't even know his last name. What, what's Randall's last name? LeBron. That's okay. That's borderline. Okay, whatever. Never have I ever wore, wore a hat during sex. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, not just any hat, too. Yeah, yeah the that. cowboy hat, yeah. My number one pick is Madeline. Okay. 
You know what? I'm drunk. I'm just going to say it. My number one pick is Jake. So now the couples are drinking and they're talking about who they would pick when they inevitably have to swap partners. And as you can see, already some of the couples are getting jealous, which is like, why would you come on the show knowing that this was what the premise was? That's like going to a show called Cheetahs where you cheat on someone and then getting annoyed that the person cheats on someone. I just, I can't. I just, I just don't get it. Wait, truth or drink? Could you see us living together for the next three weeks? No. We don't like, have, we do never so in the middle of this drinking session, April finds time to fight with her partner, Jake, as usual. And uh, she goes and cries. And it's so awkward because everybody else is just, just there sitting like, well, at least they're doing it in public. We're going to do it when we're home. Like, are you feeling like more confident in that? Or are you feeling like you don't know still? I don't know. Like, you know, I asked for the ultimatum when I brought him on the show. He did not want to do this to begin with. Like, yeah, uh, he just wanted him to go on the show. And I wanted him to say, you go and have sex. I'm just going to stay here and do this. I didn't know he was actually going to find someone. I just, I can't, I can't. A lot of these people who want the ultimatum want everything to go their way. And it's like, why even be in a relationship if you just want to control the other person? That's so, ugh, that's so icky. Don't control people. It is now time to make a decision. Okay, so now I want you to brace yourself. Oh, brace. So if you didn't get your popcorn ready, you're gonna need it. Because this is the mother of all reality scenes. It's just uh, where everyone decides who their partner is. And it's done so badly that I, have, I haven't seen this in reality TV in my life before. I choose say. Are you kidding me? I had Shanique as my choice. I promise you, I have a good connection with her. Maybe it's just me. Zay. My choice is Shanique. So, Shanique chooses Zay, and uh, Zay chooses Shanique because, of course, you can choose anyone, but the two black people have to choose each other. That sounds like a big joke, I know, but on Love is Blind, the two black people had to choose each other. I, is it a pattern? Maybe, maybe not. I'm just saying. Jake. Right. Ray. Jake. Uh, Jake chooses Ray. Ray chooses Jake. Randall. You listen and you also have that, you know, more practical, realistic side that I have been missing in the relation I came to. Um, and then so Madeline chooses Randall, but also stands up and proceeds <laughs> to throw Kobe under the bus for no reason. Randall, I like Randall because he's he's got a practical side. He's everything that Kobe isn't, and you know he's sexy and also he's like not an idiot baby man child. While Kobe just looks there and looks like he's slowly dying inside. I can really see a future with you, Randall. Madeline. I think Madeline would make an amazing wife. Uh, Randall then says that he thinks Madeline would make an amazing wife. Again, I feel like he doesn't even know her last name. Randall, what is Madeline's last name? White? I, don't... I choose Hunter. April is then asked to choose, and she makes a brash decision, choosing Hunter, a person who we haven't heard speak throughout the series because he said less than two words. He just stands there and looks pretty. Pretty disgusting. <laughs> he's, he's actually the only guy who's like not really done anything wrong. And he seems to really like his partner. It's unrealistic for me to sit here and like be like, oh, I'm happy for you. I don't want him living with someone else. I don't want him dating someone else. So then Alexis has an outburst because someone else chose her partner in a show called The Ultimatum where you have to do this. And for some reason, she's not okay with this and starts going off on the show. He is mine. I want to marry him, not see him date other people. So yeah, Alexis then goes on to say how she does not want him to be with anyone else but her and she really wants to marry him. And then Vanessa's like, I am so proud that you even said that. Uh, I just don't get it. Nothing got resolved and it just wasted 20 minutes of my life. But then she sits down and this happens. Guys, I want to marry Alexis. I love you so oh. much. Alexis, will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, yeah, I know. You've got to be kidding me. The show already has contestants leaving the show because they're like, yeah, yeah, let me marry you. I think that we should get married. The show started with Alexis being like, I'm either going to leave him 
oh, he's going to marry me. And I thought he was going to take three weeks and try and figure it out. But within three days, he made his decision. So what happens now? Do they just go home? Oh, my God. I'm looking at Colby and he better stay in his chair because I have not changed my mind. Yet. Okay. Okay. Jeez. That's what you took from that Madeline. I'm looking at Kobe and he better sit the hell down. Just because Hunter is trying to marry that witch lady, I don't want it. I want Randall. <laughs> I want Ramdoll. <laughs> I've been drinking. So we move on to episode three and it picks up where episode two is left off. We're still at the table. One couple is married and I think they're now off the table. And now we move back on to see who else is picking who. Making that other person better naturally. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing with that special somebody one day. Um, I'm just going to be real with it. I don't think Colby is like a good person. Well, clearly, you know what I'm going to ask you next. Uh, before you ask, didn't you just get married, lady? Didn't you just get engaged? What are you doing? What? This is supposed to be the happiest day of your life. You're like, yeah, okay, Hunter married me. But like, also, Colby is an asshole. What are you doing? Just stay with your married man and stop talking about Kobe. He doesn't even play a part in your life anymore. What are you doing, Alexis? You call someone out for not being a good person. Yeah. I need to hear what it is that makes you feel that way. So I went on one date with him. You know, the first thing he tells me is you're unattractive. Well, he didn't say that. He said he's not attracted to you. That doesn't mean you're unattractive. It just means that someone doesn't necessarily have to be attracted to you just because you exist. That would be <laughs> beyond egotistical. <laughs> so, uh, stop. <laughs> I don't want to waste your time. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to interrupt I you apologize. though there. Because I like, think you're giving yourself a lot of credit where credit's not deserved. If I'm being fully honest, like I didn't see that side of Colby. Luckily, while Witch Lady is uh, shitting on Colby for no reason, <sighs> which, by the way, let's put that up as a con, uh, Alexis has some sort of fixation with Kobe and wants to see him die. Don't know why. Luckily, Allison comes to his rescue and is like, actually, I had a good time with him. I was feeling, I was genuinely feeling sorry for him while I was watching this. Like, this girl went on one date and you just told her the truth and she has tried to make your day worse and worse. It just sucks. Like, he has been very kind to me. We have had really good genuine dates. Are you ready to make a choice? Yeah. So now it comes to the point where Kobe needs to make a choice and he is like, I choose you, Allison. I choose Lauren. Oh, her name's Lauren. I've been fuck I, the whole time. I knew her name was not Allison. <laughs> My bad, Lauren. I'm gonna call you Allison again, but my bad. Why did I come here if I'm gonna end up having fucking Big Cheese Colby live with Lauren for three weeks? Is that an insult? I've never heard of that one. Big Cheese Colby? Who are you calling Pinhead? Do we just start naming people like dairy ornaments? Mulkhead Mike is over here. This dumbass Mulkhead Mike comes over trying to steal my girl. Lauren. Lauren chooses Colby and they end up living together for the three weeks. I'm eating my pants. I'm not trying to do anyone up, but... Okay, so you thought that this couldn't get any weirder, wilder. There's someone who got engaged and then is still fighting with someone she had one date with. Now you got weird Nate over here talking about how he picked two girls and they didn't pick him. So now he's getting jealous over Big Cheese Kobe. He then goes ahead and does this. What the fuck? Porn? What the fuck? Wait, what? Yeah, Madeline's face says it all. Could we just pause on her face? That's the face. That's the face. <laughs> what the we stand up? fuck is that? going on? Have you ever done that to someone? Move them while they were the, in their chair as if they didn't want to be moved? Like, she was here and he's like... <laughs> hey. Hey, Allison. Oh, I mean, Lauren. My bad. Forgot your name. It's such an anarchist way to do something. What is going on? There was no one else that I could imagine myself being with. Will you marry me? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> That's kind of weird. That that happened. Nate goes down on one knee and he's like, I don't mean to show anyone up, even though someone just got married. But hey, I'm scared of Colby and I, I think I'm OK with not having kids for the duration of this period of time. So will you marry me? And instead of her being like, 
yeah, we didn't resolve any issues about the kids, which is the big point that we had. She's like, Absa, in lootly. You guys don't agree on kids. You haven't worked that out. If you didn't care, why even give an ultimatum? You know, you know what? When Alexis the witch is making sense, then you have to recalibrate your life. When she's starting to make complete sense, you gotta think about it and be like, uh, are we wrong? He's out of line, but he's right. Congratulations, but like, I'm like sitting here looking at you, I don't see the excitement like within you. And you came here with like the, um, you're the one having the ultimatum. So now Kobe starts breaking down what just happened and he's like, I don't mean to uh, rain on your parade, but I don't really get how this went from, I'm not okay with not having kids to suddenly, I'm fine with everything, everything will be fine, which is so valid. Um, by the way, Nate's cons, uh, jealousy, uh, scheming and lying, and also just being a bad person in general. Are you saying that her saying yes to me proposing to the love of my life is her being fake? Is that what you're saying right now? That After it was a four fake days? Proposal? We've been dating for two and a half years. It hasn't been four days. Like, we've been I dating. Think I'm so sorry. Okay, I don't know if she's got cheese for brains, but all Kobe was saying is that You've been on the show for four days. You started off the show by saying one of y'all wanted kids, one of y'all didn't. And suddenly in four days, things have changed. And both of them were like, I haven't been dating her for four days, idiot. And she comes to his rescue, literally saying the same thing like, yeah, idiot. We have been dating for way longer than four days. One and a half years is one, two, three. Two hours later. Four, five, six, three hours later. It's just so many days. It's a lot of days. More than four. And literally, Vanessa has to be like, uh, can I just stop you two, uh, Thelma and Louise over here? And just what he was trying to say is what changed in the time that you've been here. Suddenly, both of you all are agreeing on the fact that you don't want kids. Then can I talk? Absolutely. But right. I think that's so what he was saying. You should be directing your conversation out. to me then. And sure. what I said, I don't know if you listened. And if that means that we're in our life forever and... We don't have kids. I'm okay with that. Congratulations. Yeah, uh, congratulations. You played yourself. So I thought you wanted kids. Are you gonna? You're 30 years old. You're telling me in 20 years you're gonna be happy with the decision that yes, I didn't want kids because I really wanted this goal, and she didn't want kids, so I didn't want kids. If it's something that you want and it's and it's not, if the values don't align and it's that big a deal, there's literally there's seven billion people in the world. You will find someone who's who's like yes, I also want kids. You have to believe in that, man. Because if you don't believe in that, it's a it's a very lost cause for you, Nate. And I feel like Nate didn't marry her because he loved her. I think he married her out of fear that someone else would take her, which makes him a piece of <laughs> really. It's not gonna kill this experience for me. I did have something there. There was clearly something there. So seeing as how uh, Colby got rejected because Allison slash Lauren is with that other guy and how Hunter left for Alexis, the only two people left are April and Kobe, and they shack up. But they shack up as a team instead of like a dating couple. They're just gonna see the experiment through. Cool, and, and, and I, would, I just wanna say one last thing, man. Never mind, sorry, Nate's still speaking. Why are you upset that I proposed and got engaged to this girl right here? But now whenever I literally get engaged with a girl, you're saying that it's preventing you. Uh, what the f- Every time I get engaged with a girl, how many times has he done this? How many times has Kobe stopped you when you've done what? Every, literally bro, every time I get engaged with someone, you're always there telling me how it sucks. Every single time. Remember in Pompeii? Remember when I did that? Oh man, the volcano wasn't the only thing erupting that day, was it Kobe? Kobe, so, back to what you were saying. Well, I'm so glad like that this has kind of happened this way and I'm Really fing pissed. Could you see us living together for the next three weeks? No. So I'm really happy to go through this experience with you because this is the reason that I came here. Do we have an April crying counter? If not, we should get one because this is this is three. The third time's a charm. So I'm happy for both of you, but if you want me to be real, I don't think that engagement was real and I would be pissed oh if my I were the God, likeness. Are you Can you let me, me finish? Get up and steal the spotlight from their fing night. This is what happens when you get people who don't have their lives together and then you give them drinks. What do you call that? Just a really bad Netflix show. 
Are you just like a 15 year old, like flying around, not understanding what's going on? It's to a point where you gotta let someone talk. Stop. You gave the ultimatum, and I don't know if anyone here at this table with clarity can say you guys worked out what you came here for as the ultimatum. Holy crap, Alexis is just making perfect sense. I don't, ever since she got married, she's been making sense. Hunter is having a great impression on her. He's leaving a good impression on this lady. That's exactly right, Alexis. I don't think you guys have solved the problem. You know what the thing is? A lot of people fight as couples. They fight and they think that marriage is gonna solve or iron out the issues that they had as a couple. And it doesn't. It just amplifies them later on in life. I, I can tell you, my parents are not together and they never they weren't when I was young. They always regret it. And I always told them, I was like, you shouldn't have done it. Don't love your life with regrets. You told me 10 minutes before proposing that you were gonna choose me. Who chose me? It's so funny how you said Nate told you 10 minutes ago before you proposed that he was gonna choose you. So then now everyone starts bagging on Nate and rightfully so. Apparently 10 minutes before trying to marry uh, his partner, he was like, I'm gonna choose you, Madeline. But then he, uh, she got scooped up by Randall. So then he went and tried to choose someone else and she got scooped up. April also comes in with this. But like there are so many fucking moments that like when we were having our conversations that like you, instead of your eyes here, like you were looking at my tits, dude. And like looking back up at my face and I told Lauren that. No, you so didn't. I just want, and if you're not gonna go through this experience, like why the fuck are you here? And there it is. April leaving counter one because she does this more than once as well. Whew, man. Did I, didn't I tell you this was going to be a show of biblical proportions? This is wild. So that concludes the partner picking activities. Everyone chooses their partner. Zay and Shanique. Then you got Jake and Ray. Colby and April. And also Randall and Madeline. Those are the four couples. The other two have now been married. So they are not going to be participating in the show. What the f***? Yeah, what the f*** was that? That whole engagement was... <laughs> oh, I'm so frustrated about that. April didn't choose me, I didn't choose her, but maybe we can work together so that we get what we want out of this. Okay. Let's come together. You guys are not gonna come together. <laughs> but anyway, they decide to make a pact and tackle this thing as friends and maybe not as couples. Even though they know that they haven't chose each other, they're still going to play out the experiment to see what it brings them. For the most part, like, I like sleep naked, I poop naked, I brush my teeth naked, like, Sometimes I cook naked, like... So that's, that's gonna be an adjustment for me to... She pooped naked, huh? She pooped naked. Hey, hey, things I know about Shanique that I don't ever want to know. She pooped naked. I feel like we're camping. It does kind of feel like we're camping out, right? It does. I wish we had those sleeping bags that, like, just, like, didn't make you move. Just like a worm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I wish I had those sleeping bags so I could put it over my head and just suffocate myself. I just, I can't. This show got seven more episodes. It's seven more hours, and I am just... I'm like a bird. I want to fly away. Yes, yeah, so I am attracted to Ray. If I could have sex with Ray, hell yeah, who would, would it? I don't want to sound like an asshole, but the guy's lying to you if they said they wouldn't. So Jake then confesses that he would have sensual relations with Ray if given the chance. And he's like, I'm just being honest, who wouldn't? And you know what? I think um, Jake, straight shooter, positive, pro. I think he's a, he's a good guy. Really, I don't think he said anything abrasive. I think he's just tried to be the best he could. I think that sex is very important in a relationship. And anybody who says that it's not important is lying. You know what? Ray, another positive. Straight shooter as well. 100%. I completely agree. I think in a relationship, that part of the aspect is uh, super important. And let me just go on a tangent here and explain that. I'll tell you from my personal experience, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I may be superficial. Superficial means I like people I'm attracted to, which means that I want to have that part of physical connection with the person. Because if I'm in a relationship, I want to be physically and mentally attracted to them, not just one or the other. And yes, it's very uh, fairy tale like and very beautiful to think that just a personality will get you through the day. But for certain people, it doesn't. And that doesn't make them less nice. It doesn't make them less of a person if they require both to each their own. So I agree with Ray because I'm in the same boat. For me, I have to be physically attracted to the person as well as mentally attracted. Her coming to the realization is 
kind of opening a door for me. It's that scene in the Titanic where he's like freezing to death and she has oh on like God. the blanket on the door. On the board. On the board, yeah, yeah. that's how I Yeah, my favorite scene from the Titanic is when uh, the guy's like, you must have angels coming out of your arse if you believe that. You know, <laughs> you know the scene? Oh, forget it, Boyle. You just like have angels fly out of your arse is getting next to the likes of her. Jake, I'll never let Jake, go. Jake, I'll never I let go, I promise. <laughs> So there's clearly a budding chemistry between the two and uh, you know, my psychic ability is telling me that I think there's something there. We have too much fun together. You and me, stars in our very own galaxy. So this is it. This It's already started. It's began. Is this show just a show for people to have a three week hall pass? Because on one hand they're like, yeah, we broke up with our other couples and now we're dating for three weeks. But it just feels like just a little hole pass to try and get it out of your system. So, you know, that's fine. But it's a really shitty way to, like, have a show that's about marriage and love when basically all you're doing is getting a free pass to bang someone else. How have you been? Good. This is Jake. Nice to meet you, Mr. William. All right, Jake. So now they have the classic thing in every damn Love is Blind, whatever special Nick and Vanessa feel that they have to meet their parents, even though it's only been, I don't know, a week of dating. And so now Ray takes Jake to meet her parent and he gives her like some weird advice. I, got, I was in the Marine Corps for five years and I just oh, got good. out last year, yeah. I'm a vendor for the Department of Defense. I train people, don't go too deep into it. You gotta go through life and gauge things. Kind of like a car, don't just wait for the shit to hit the fan or for mm -hmm. the red light to come on. Because her dad is a car enthusiast. He now only talks in car metaphors. A relationship is like a car. When the shit hits the fan, the wheels come off. You gotta ride that thing till the wheels come off. You can't put junk in the trunk. You know what I mean? You gotta crack open the window if you want more wind ho. Let's not Zay? talk about- This dude had pictures all like looking, like holding his chest. What was he doing? He, he had some really- lame It was holding his chest, bro. Have you- you can't- this dude had weird pictures. He was doing he was doing gang signs. He was doing this every time. I'm like, bro, can you put them down? Compton is that way, son. My approval hasn't been that high, but uh, this is the first time I felt like, okay, you know, this guy's okay. Oh yeah, you guys have my blessing. Look, you guys got a whole life ahead of you. Yeah, don't mess that up. So yeah, he almost sarcastically says, oh yeah, you guys have my blessing. And that's that. I really don't know how to read him, but I'm sure if I had a car next to him or if Jake drove a, B a BM 3, 5, or 7 series, he'd be like, I love him. So, yeah. Now Madeline and Randall meet each other, and I really... I want to take a moment to say that I think that in a relationship, you are the company you keep. What I mean by that is your friends and your friend group says a lot about who you are. So if ever I and whoever I have dated, I've seen their friends. And if their friends were these like people who were just bad influences or people that I just could not stand or get along with, I need to get out of there. And I've always maintained that because the company you keep are the people that influence you and they influence your environment. And you just don't want someone who's not going to align with your values. Friendships are an extension of yourself. And yes, it's okay to have friends who do stuff that you don't like and things. But if you have a whole group of that, you basically create an echo chamber of people who are just going to kick you when you're down and then pick the other person up. And it's really just a recipe for destruction. I adore Randall. He's different than what I came here with. Me and Mason went to high school together. Yeah. Okay. And when I moved to College Station, she introduced me to Carly. Oh my god, can you introduce Kali to some fucking lips? Damn it, Kali. Kayla um, was- Oh my god, she looks like a villain from a Disney movie. Sorry, I'm sorry. Jesus, I wasn't prepared for that. Y'all know Colby. Yeah. Um, he just wants to be a center of attention. In college, Colby and I did end up hooking up. <laughs> Wasn't really something rememberable. It wasn't really something rememberable. That's what I mean when I say you are the company you keep. Imagine a friend group where everyone's hooked up with your partner. Like, jeez, that's just, that's anarchy. On an attractive level, I definitely think Randall would be the better lover. I would definitely do it if I were in Madeline's position. Yeah, but you're not, are you? And oh my god, don't leave her around Randall. I would, I would definitely, definitely do, do it, it if, if I were in Madeline's, Madeline's position. position. Because imagine having friends where you can't even leave them around your guy or girl because you think that they're going to take them. I try my hardest 
to be as toxic as I can to my friends because I hate them and I try to steal their goals. Not even because I like their goals. I just hate my friends. But a normal human wouldn't do that. A normal human wouldn't would do the opposite. Honestly, you should be a normal human. This this goal is just crazy. He is a nice guy, but I just don't know if he's on the same level as you, like maturity wise. Like Madeline's friends are just like yes men to her and they just reiterate her hatred for Colby, which is why she's been going out with him for so long, because she hates him. That makes complete sense. Meanwhile, back uh, with Ray and Jake, they seem to be having the best chemistry out of everyone. I'm gonna love you better. I'm gonna love you better than before. Now just add shitty EDM to it. Are you sure? People are gonna hate it. Hey man, it's for the ultimatum. Anything for the ultimatum. So now the girls and boys have a night out and they discuss after being involved for a week with how things are going. It starts off all cordial and nice, but then you can see the jealousy develop between these groups. We got some cuddles in. One? Getting a little like, oh, yeah. No. Is like day one of sleeping oh, together? What? No, how did you know that he boned get... her? I can feel it. That's, oh my god, the word boner is just not, shouldn't be involved in human society. How, oh my god, you felt his bone out here? He's got a boner? Oh, what a boner. Wow, I like boners. Boner. <laughs> So now we get on, we move on to the guys section, and uh, <laughs> I know that the scene at the table was the most confusing, and it was just like, what just happened? Until now. Get your popcorn again, get some more popcorn if you need to. This is easily going to be the most confusing story <laughs> that you're going to hear. Me and Zay went out one night, uh -huh. and there was a little whisper between Zay and this girl, but she f planted one on me. Uh, he told that girl to come over to you. It felt like it was Zay's intentions for her to make out with me, yes. He goes and kisses you. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. So here's the story. Colby and Zay were at a party. A girl comes over to Colby and kisses him. Before she goes over to Colby, she goes over to Zay. Zay says something. And for some reason, Colby is like, Zay did this. Zay used his magic to uh, get the girl to kiss Colby. And Zay does not agree with that. This is the fight that we're having. I don't like how you just said uh, Zay was, there was some whispers going on. About, this is me being I a man. Listen, I'm on hey, my I'm, right I, now. I'm talking. Putting, I'm, your work, I'm putting your word, I'm talking. You hear what you're don't, saying. That fake is fake. How is that fake? What, what is this conversation? What is this weird argument of, hey man, we were at a party, Zay, Zay looked at a girl, he used it as a black magic, and then she came over to me, and now we're making out. And Zay's like, oh, hey, hey, what about black magic? I didn't, I didn't even talk to this girl. Just because she's kissing you, it has nothing to do with me. And he's like, no, 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 dude. She would have never liked me if it wasn't for you, my dog. How you doing? And he's like, F that. Yeah, I don't even know. I didn't even say anything. She, you did it all by yourself. She, your sexiness attracted her. It has nothing to do with me. These two people are just two people who can't take the credit. They're each trying to give each other credit for this goal. I don't know if she's just ugly or something, but there's no other reason why neither of them are admitting it. Kobe is a liar and a cheater. How have you felt being with Jay? We just sort of kissed. It just happened. How'd that go? Uh-huh. <laughs> it went good. Yeah, who started that? Like, I'm gonna tell you something. No. Please, Madeline, go ahead. She's drunk. I'm trying to get no. to know you and Jake as a couple. No. You just talk over him. No. I think she talks over everyone at any given time. She also references herself in the third person. So I'm gonna put that as a con because anybody who talks about themselves in the third person is so stupid. Leo would never do that. Leonardo DiCaprio. I wouldn't talk about myself like that. I'm the only one out of us four that did give the ultimatum. Now it's just clear as day. I was right all along. Because it's making me realize how much love I have for this other person. You know what? Colby's right. Watching this show makes me realize how much love I have for the outdoors and just things that have nothing to do with Netflix. He's right. When you watch a piece of sh it makes you realize how good normal shows are. Love is Blind is... I actually want to watch it now. You're my threat, dude. But I'm gonna tell you, bro, like, he's taught me so much in these past two weeks. I, I kiss Madeline, bro. You what? I, I kissed her. I, I did uh, I did the tongue too. Oh shit. Oh shit. Like, I will tell you, I love you. I love you. Back to Madeline, and she is getting uber drunk, 
and is now talking about Randall and Shanique is not having it. Randall's amazing. Like literally, we help the whole mind. He's expressed that he's physically attracted to me also. And now I'm getting everything I need out of Randall, everything I've ever asked for out of a guy. Like Randall's like my fucking perfect guy. Imagine saying that in front of someone who's been dating them for like two, three years and isn't over them. Like they're not broken up. Me hearing Randall sexy, making me want to shoot myself. Yeah, I know, me too. Randall sexy. I hate it. He doesn't do anything he doesn't mean. I'm stuck on that part. I mean, I don't know. He kissed me off camera. I touched a boner as well. It's like, I didn't ask for that shit. <laughs> oh, she just threw that in there. He kissed me off camera. I also touched the boner. I touched Randall's boner. I touched it. I was like, oh. He kissed me. Okay. Madeline is, is kind of freaking me out right now. I didn't know there were boners involved, so. Stop. Can we stop saying, but it's just not a professional word. I didn't know there were boners involved. Boner. Am I going too hard, Shanique? <laughs> I'm gonna go yeah. pee really quick. Where's the bathroom? I actually would go with you. I'll go. Okay, where that guy just walked by? All right. Okay. Yeah, well, this is, um, that's, I don't, this is where the girls' night ends. That's, that's it. Shanique gets super angry. Madeline gets super drunk. Kobe tries to fight Zay. Zay tries to fight back. And we are stuck wondering if 365 days the sequel is better than this. And I'm genuinely wondering that because it's so bad. That is it for me. I'm gonna take a five second intermission. I'll be back with the power of editing real soon. Grab yourself something to drink and let's get on to part two. This video has gotten to the point where I started during daylight and it's dark outside. I've just never committed so much time to a shitty reality TV show before. Here we go, let's carry on. Madeline has done a great job of pissing me off tonight. Being a little bit too adamant about how fine she thinks Randall is. I'm done. I'm ready to go make out with Randall off camera. Do people like that really exist, do they? I, I had no idea Madeline was literally the embodiment of what the people from White Girls did when they made themselves white. This girl is literally the embodiment of the characters of white chicks played by the Wayans brothers. She's She was literally hobbling off like, oh, I was just gonna make out with Randall. I was just so happy that he's sexy and black. They really got a woman like that. What a class act she is. Madeline gets drunk with ease. She also met her boyfriend at a bar. So I guess you could put that as a con. Drunk. Uh, but that was it for episode four. Now we're on to episode five. We're halfway through. Hallelujah. And uh, around this time, I stopped counting what episodes were on because they all stopped blending together. And I hadn't had too many more mollies to pop. Uh, I ran out of Percocet as well. And I just started popping sugar packets at that point. Cocaína. No. Flour. Shanique told me. Oh, me and Zay didn't kiss. But he cuddled me and he got a boner. <laughs> I was like, guys. Okay. Uh, yes, episode five picks up where, with the couples going back home to tell each other about what had happened at the girls and guys night out. Of course, Ray brings up the word boner, which I feel like really should be stricken from the English dictionary. They should just call it a hard rock nick at this point. Zay literally loves you. Like, I literally had a hard heart with him and I was like, I don't want to do anything. I want you to be happy. But in all honesty, do I think he's good for you? No. Okay, so, um, weird and uh, stupid thing that just happened. Jake is like, Hey man, look, I had a heart-to-heart -heart with your actual partner, Zay. He loves you so much that I don't think that you belong to him. You belong to me, girl. Also, I got a boner. I'm sorry, I got a hard rock nick right now. You want to see? Um, a lot of the show is just that. People being like, oh, you know, you do suit your old partner, but you should get with me. It's just a bunch of full of nonsense. And then Jake proceeds to kiss her and she says that he's perfect. It's been two weeks, guys. It's been two weeks and you guys already like, there is no way that you could do anything wrong in my eyes. Way too fast. Jake was like, can I speak with you outside? And so we went outside and we talked and he told me that he kissed um, Ray. And then, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, what? You, you making these faces and shit. Okay, so uh, remember how I said Zay likes to fight with everyone and anything? Same thing with Shanique. Both of them are just two people who, for some reason, cannot express their emotions without feeling the need to Mike Tyson someone verbally. Putting them together was just a... Just a, you know, mistakes were made. That would be the best term for that one. And as soon as Zay starts talking about Ray, Shanique makes a face. I don't I don't really know what she does. But Zay's like, why do you keep making faces like that? You gotta show me the faces. Well, you gotta talk it out. And then they start fighting. Zay, 
Listen, um, no, 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 Shanice, lower, no, no. Let me, lower let me, no, lower let me talk. Because you're sitting up and you're starting to yell and you're starting to get a little not, strong with your words. Okay, lower, lower it, don't please. talk to me like that. Because I've been, no, you know that. not talk to me like that. Oh my God, she's using the crab hands technique. Don't talk to me like that. You, you, you're raising your tone. I need you to simmer down, and I'm gonna snip off your boner if you don't. Shut the hell up, you know what I mean? Can you imagine if Zay did that to a goal? <laughs> hey, Shanique, no more, no more. <laughs> look, alligator mouth? Mm -mm. Do you know how bad that would look? Oh my gosh. So we had the stuff, like the double standards that happen sometimes. She also gaslighted him. She was like, don't raise your tone. This man was talking like at the exact same tone. Not that I'm defending him, because I don't, <laughs> do not like him either, but what a weird gaslight that was. I'm not talking to you no way. Yeah. Yeah. She hit him with a yeah. I'm not talking to you no way. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, I've been sitting here listening to you. Because you're making faces. I'm, and I'm gonna make faces. And if you, it makes you that damn uncomfortable, like... Get me a mask and put it on my face. And then I'll only have happy face. If that's if that's what's gonna make this relationship work, give me a mask. Pretend I'm a clown, baby. Not fucking today. Not tomorrow. Well, I don't give a not fuck. Not next week. Well... Not next month. Not next year. Mm-mm. No, no. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Yeah. Nah. Mm-mm. 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 This is what happens when, what do you call that? Uh, an immovable force meets uh, they. That's what the phrase is. Because you, you making faces. Stop yelling. I wasn't the one being rude first. Just, be, just because I'm speaking loud. I like how his argument is she's making faces. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> you keep making faces. I don't, I don't know how to interpret the emotions that is coming out of your faces. I, is it good or is it bad faces? I don't know what exactly he's even mad about. I, I can't. I don't know. I don't get it. I, and listen, and said, listen, but I'm. So you got passionate, and I said, "Can you watch okay. it?" I'm about to call you out your name because you are really. Call tripping. me out my name. You are tripping. Right, you are man. tripping. Anyway, they fight so hard. Zay leaves, even though this is not his original partner. It's always nice within three weeks if you start fighting with another person. That is, you just know that there's some problem with one of y'all. I mean, I just I don't even know what to say. You're spending three weeks with a different person, and you. You're fighting with them? Woo! Somebody needs work, right? Come on! Meanwhile, Madeline and Randall's house, Madeline starts to grope on Randall and wants to do him. Randall says the cameras are there and also because she's super drunk, he probably does the right thing. Can we put a pro up for Randall for being a gentleman? The fact that he does not want to take advantage of someone who's inebriated, good, good on Randall. I'd say it's about an 85% chance that Randall has a boner right now. What the hell are you using statistics and boners in the same sentence? I never ever thought that would be a thing in my life. There's a 69% chance he's got a boner <laughs> and a 100% chance I'm gonna touch it. <sighs> what is this? What is these phrases, Madeline? Please get with the program. Why do you care? I don't care. I know you don't care, but I care. I don't care. <laughs> uh, I don't 100% get what you're saying. So then, um,. Randall says that, you know, they're on camera, he don't want to do nothing, and then she gets a little bit annoyed. Randall then goes to tell Madeline about the Colby and Zay story, which I, to this day, have no idea what it is. Just to recap, Colby said someone kissed him, he blamed it on Zay, and he was like, wow, Zay's magic skills got the goal to kiss me. And Zay's like, I don't, that's all you, bro. And then they started fighting over that. I don't know, it's so stupid, but Randall feels the need to explain this to Madeline. Which again, I don't get. Zay was like, don't put my name in that dirt because in reality, what happened was Colby was the one that seduced the girl to come kiss him. I don't give a fuck and I don't do you care to continue the conversation, no, but, but honestly. Go I say, I don't care, I don't care my kid talking. Randall, please start talking. Uh, you keep talking. I don't, I don't even know how to con that. Just maybe her voice. Madeline's drunk voice? Ugh, I couldn't, I can't stand it. But I, what I'm saying is... What did he say Kobe that? admitted... Maybe. Listen, Colby admitted that, like, maybe... Is this, is this lady eating beans from a can? I don't care. Mm, these, are bean, these beans are cold. Wow. Oh, no. He was wrong, and if okay, he, and maybe, maybe I did wrong. Okay, and maybe I was wrong that you made out with me, and I reciprocated, and I was into that. And I don't, I'm, I'm really not really sure what is her problem. I have, I have genuinely no idea. And I also have no idea why Randall felt the need to even say the story. But anyway, back to Zay and Shanique. 
Zay returns from his momentary lapse of judgment and he's like, I'm sorry, man. I was being crazy. Let's hug it out. For what? You have only been vulnerable off camera and then you just put that shit on me. That's, on. No, that's not what I said. Yeah, she's now sounding like a voice message in person. Oh my god, this lady is just so much. She's just a lot, man. Let me remind you, this is only because Randall didn't want to bang her. That's the only reason she's even borderline mad, because she didn't get some. Can you imagine if a guy was like that? Because he didn't get some, he was acting all whiny and stuff. So no head? That's not gonna fly, but she gets to do it. Oh, man. Physical intimacy and sex, to me, are it's a huge part of a relationship, especially um, as I've not always been able to be so verbally vulnerable, open, expressive. So you like sex, huh? Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, I don't blame her. I, I feel the same. I, I think physical intimacy is very important. Uh, you've known this guy for two weeks. You got drunk and then you tried to do him. Forgive him for actually wanting to do you in a, maybe, I don't know, a light that's a bit better. Maybe when you're sober and fully aware of your surroundings and actions. I don't know. Can you give the guy a benefit of a doubt, please? Clearly, he's still there. He didn't walk out on you. He didn't raise his voice. Randall's been a pretty level-headed guy up till this point. So I really don't know why she's giving him as much crap as she's giving him. Genuinely, it's because she wants she wants that ding dong and she didn't get it and she's whiny and, and this is just really really bad Randall doesn't want to give that to me and it hurts um. So uh, yeah, anyway, Randall uh, leaves Madeline for the night. He's like this is crazy I don't really know what's happening here and then he goes to meet with Shanique and things go well except they don't because nobody likes Randall. <laughs> Why are you like looking away and not listening? Your whole thing was, you want to be a better listener just like I want to. This is the perfect time to work on it. It's just us two what, talking right now. You want to kiss Madeline? Okay, let's see. This now I want to cuddle. All right. So then, um, Shanique's big problem is that Randall exists. I, she seems to have a problem anytime he does anything, which is... <laughs> really sad. You know, he's part of the show and rightfully so, he's with another partner. So is Shanique. This whole conversation is the biggest double standard I've seen on the show. Shanique gets mad that Randall, I can't believe I'm going to say this, gets a boner with Madeline. I hate myself so much. She then goes on to say, so you don't mind if Zay gets a boner when he sleeps with me, implying that that's happened. So she gets mad that he's doing the same thing she's doing. I mean, I don't know. You tell me what the double C. You tell me when that makes sense. To quote Zay, you you gotta you gotta let me know when that makes sense. Your dick wanna get hard. Your dick wanna get hard. You wanna you wanna do sexy things. You're so patronizing. Shani, don't walk away. There's no it's no um, purpose of walking away. Nah, Shani, you, got you, got me you got me. You got me. You just said the wrong. You know it's hilarious. <laughs> is that when she's with Zay, Zay walks away. And then when she's with Randall, she walks away. It's just like an endless cycle of people who cannot seem to have a conversation without getting to the point where they're like, ah, I gotta leave, I can't handle this. The only person who stays is Randall and he always gets the short end of the stick. I feel so sorry for him. I'm gonna give Randall a uh, pro zen-like patience. I, I don't know, I don't know. You're my ex in this whole story. Now. Are you my ex? Cool. That's not what I'm saying. We're not in a relationship. Cool. Okay, uh, so then Randall chases Shanique out and um, he's like, listen, you're with Zay. I'm with Madeline for this experience for the three weeks. Uh, we're broken up. Because in the show, they clearly state that the couples are broken up and they are exes. So he's just quoting what Vanessa has said in the show. Shanique hears this and then gives him shit about it. I, I just, Randall, I feel so sorry for him. I want to give him a hug and be like, bro, you just got bad luck. You want me to just sit in my corner? Sit in the fucking corner and miss me. Shanique, then that's obvious. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm gonna I'm a need you to like really grow up about this. That was the dumbest thing I've heard tonight. You want me to sit in the corner? Come on now. All right. Please. That was, this was a great right. conversation. So Shanique then says what she ideally wants Randall to do is to just sit in the corner for three weeks straight and miss her and he's like that's stupid and her even you know being talked back to is too much for her so she gets in the cab and she's like giddy up take me home and i always love when they do this in shows the cab driver just starts going you don't know where the fuck she lives so you're about to leave so you're about to leave so you're about to leave he comes out of the side of the camera that was so funny oh my god 
So you about to leave? Are you about to you go about are you gonna leave it? All right. Hey, tell me if you're leaving. I don't. I don't okay, I just want to know. <laughs> Shanice, why do you stop? I stop. Know. Stop. You can just drive it. Yeah, so Randall has gone zero for two. I don't know, man. All the goals seem to just be rolling, like steamrolling over him and stuff. Hopefully things go better with him. But now we catch up with the the ultimatum's best couple, the only couple that seems to be walking out, Ray and Jake. I guess I want to know, who do you think is going to like walk away like from this together? Crazy enough, I don't know. Uh, so, you know, after all the fighting, Shanique and Zay get together and that night in the bed, it looks like they, uh, it looks like they do something between 68 and 70, if you know what I mean. She looks like she also, um, how do I say this nicely, gives him the suck, the Mark Zuckerberg, if you will. It also kind of looks like paranormal activity, so they could just be having a ghost. It's that felt way more like home than I could ever imagine. So now we go back to Madeline and Randall because clearly Shanique has done some things that she could probably not take back. If anything holds me back from you, it's the fact that normally the way that like I do accept whatever love, intimacy is physically. Like that's the easiest way for me to do that. Um, so for you to not express that. I just, I, I always trip out thinking like if it was Randall saying like, you know, I like you a lot, girl, but like physical intimacy, you're not giving me the poontang, you know what I mean? Do you know how like slimy it would be to hear a guy saying that, you know? Everybody would like be commentating on him being like, oh, what a slimy, what a ugh, guy. But when Madeline says it, it's just like, it's so normal for her. She's like, yeah, I, you know, I, I normally, I show physical intimacy, which is to say I, uh, I suck a lot, you know, I do the thing, I do the dirty deed. She's saying it in like a most poetic way possible, but essentially what she's saying is, you don't fuck me. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I made you feel that way, buddy. Jeez. Well, well, well slap her here, you know what I mean? <laughs> well. Randall embodies everything that I need and my friends need and my family need. Help me. Okay, so then I don't really know what happens, but Randall decides to kiss Madeline. I guess it's their last day before they swap and go back to their original partners, so he's trying to get a little lip action, maybe. I wasn't expecting that. Huh? That's, I wasn't expecting that. <sighs> Man, Colby is not going to be happy about this one, huh? You are a great trial husband. Mm -mm. Not the disco ball, lighting up the whole world. So then uh, Zay and Shanique share a little kiss because it's their last night together as well. A little, you know, look, action. Everybody's getting it. I was thinking, let's name the four ways we connect. Okay. I'll go first. Ah, yes, my favorite uh, white men, Kobe and April. Forgot about them, didn't really hear about them at all in the four weeks. They didn't have anything too bad or good that was going on. They were just like exploring the friendship. Nothing of interest happened until the final day when they play Connect Four to talk about the four things they've learnt in this experience, which is kind of cute and also kind of cringe. It's cringe. So this is for you pushing me into being a positive and confident person, just like Colby is. So they're the only couple that was like sort of a friend couple, but you know, last day jitters, everybody has to say bye. And I'll tell you what, this is how I say bye to my friends as well. Give them a little smooch on the lips. Which is what Kobe does to April. Uh oh. You should really know by now. So yeah, that uh, made me throw up in my mouth so bad. But anyway, uh, now we are back at the table in which we first met where everyone was being rowdy. Finally, Nick and Vanessa are back and we start swapping the couples. Let's just get right into it. What is this? Three week period been like for you guys. I have learned a lot from you to listen without it going in one ear out the other kind of thing, which I think that's what I was missing in my last relationship. How do you teach a man to listen, you know? Because <laughs> I can't get this chunk of coal over here to listen. He's like, blah, blah, blah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Kobe is just known for saying things that girls want to hear and then not actually following through. So I don't think he actually been listening. I think he's the one who's been talking most of the time. But he's going to give you some bullshit. Well, it's a lot of talking. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, pushed me to be a stronger and more mature woman. And you become just that. Oh, <laughs> woo! That was the smoothest thing Kobe ever did. Pro for Kobe. Sometimes he could be smooth. Um, also, I can't help but notice he does his eyebrows. They're very prominent. They look very nice. So like nice, nice brows, I guess. Did she start her period or did she lose her virginity? And what of that are you taking credit for? Okay, Madeline Jealous B. Con Jealous B. She suddenly got hella jealous for Kobe. I thought she was the one trying to get with Randall. This is so spiteful. What kind of partner do you want in your life? Do you want a partner who is sad when you are doing well? Don't you guys want a partner that even if things end, the person will still want the best for you? Every relationship I've been in, I've said that like, you know, at the end of it, I genuinely want that other person to do well. And because of that, every relationship that's ended, we've still maintained like a really good friendship after that, which is something I don't think everyone can say. I think it's important to genuinely care for someone and I don't know man if my partner was like yo what are you doing with that girl or how can you actually say that it would be like sort of a red flag I don't want my partner to be like I'm only happy with you or I only want you to be happy with me I should be happy everywhere with or without you I should just be happy or with you or something like that you make me feel completely heard and understood if you and I were to get married you will be a wonderful husband and father. If we were to get married and have a kid, you'd be a wonderful husband and dad, which I would need right now. As soon as you put a ring on it, you better pull up and park that truck in my garage, if you know what I mean. And you don't take it out till the garbage is unloaded, because I need that baby by tomorrow. Man, this really is the ultimatum. This is the ultimate. Um, you allowed me to express myself and sat there and listened and didn't react or had an opinion just based off of what I just said. This is this is like a real passive aggressive table, isn't it? You you allowed me to listen and you didn't you know you know you wasn't passive aggressive and you made faces and 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 you also uh, uh you didn't leave and you didn't call a cab and say go home and the cab driver knew suspiciously where to take you as if he'd been fucking you on the side because you know where your home is, you didn't do that. So yeah, would I marry you? No, no. But it was fun three weeks. I got hundred comments of how perfect Randall is, and I wouldn't bring him here if I didn't want to marry him. I think he's a great yeah. guy. But like, your experience with Randall, respectfully, you've known him for three weeks. What the hell kind of comment is that? I've never seen someone diss someone and compliment someone in the same sentence. Randall is a good guy. In fact, he's so good. That's the reason why I want to marry him. But with all due respect, he's a piece of shit. And you don't you only known him for three weeks. He's he's one of the worst people I ever met. He's got so much learning to do that it's it almost blows my mind. And in fact, I've I wanted to blow my own brains out just just knowing this man. But but don't ever try and go for him because he's my man and he's a perfect man. So Shanique needs to get a hold of herself and decide what she wants. You can't have this man and then also scream at him every time. Like, walk on yourself, Shanique. You, clearly, you have some things as well. Randall, like I said, seems to be the only person who I'm like, he seems to have a good head on his shoulders. He's not really abrasive in any way, shape, or form. I think he's pretty good. So, I don't know. This is giving you a super rare opportunity. It's about you as a person and then... God willing, finding that other person. Why she say it like that? Why she say it with such emphasis? God willing, you find that other person. Because I know that my husband, I settled for him. I settled for that motherfucker. Whether it's the person you came with or the person that you meet here. And if you look at someone like us, he was literally in a very public marriage and a very public divorce. He looks like he's actually contemplating ways that he could use any of the items to end himself. That's what he looks like right now. He looks like, how did I get myself on this marriage? Why am I on this show? Why don't I just call my mom and go home back to wherever I came from? Because this is not where I want to be. Have you ever had your man looking so sad that you thought, maybe I should break up with him out of pity? That's the look that Nick has right now. And I had to go through all that shit. Anywho, after this uh, conversation, the second trial marriages begin. And those are three weeks with your original partner after spending three weeks with your new partner. So as you can tell, there's probably going to be a little animosity towards the start because people are going to be like, oh, what were you doing with them? And 
I would assume some fighting would occur. I've been jealous too about you and Shanique connecting and stuff. And I mean, like at girls' night, she like brought up that you had a boner. What? Yeah, listen, man. Can we? Can we do? Can can? Hey, listen. You know what? My brain just exploded. Uh, can we remove boner? Can we just? Can we call it anything? Can you just say you had a hard dick? Can you? Whatever. Like anything would work. What are we in? Grade four? You got a stiffy. She said you got a stiffy. Was it true? Damn. That's Sorry, I hate to put you on the spot, but I mean, I was jealous. I was sad about it. I mean, oh man, it's always the girls on the show who are like, so what, you got a, you got boner, huh? You like other girls? If, if she's grinding her ass on you, you, you get a boner? I thought you were loyal. I, I thought it was, I thought you could retract it back in and then it turns into a vagina. Like, so you're telling me you just, you just getting boners everywhere. I hate to break it to you, but you're on a show called The Ultimatum in which you knew that you were going to swap partners with someone and probably living with them for three weeks was going to amount to at least one of those. I'm not saying they had to do it, but it happened. And also you and Jake been smooching and kissing and tonguing and God knows what else. So kind of, again, a double standard uh, the way we do this. None of the guys have been like, I'm kind of jealous that you uh, have been sucking off my friend. Like, none of the guys even said that. It's really, it's really telling that all the girls are like, so you got a boner? Are you, are you even loyal to me? I'm just happy to kind of just have you back. Maybe. Are you really happy? So, well, we meet back up with the April and Jake, who was the first and foremost couple, the one April really wanted to get married to Jake. But now things seem a little more tumultuous. I know, big word. I looked it up. In the past three weeks, I've fallen for Ray. Come to find out, April's been texting me. A lot of guys that she found out partying at the club. I've seen her with all these other dudes on uh, Instagram as well. Oh, damn, I don't even know what she said, but clearly this is the issue. Uh, couples who are now coming back together and are realizing, oh, you guys might have done stuff. Again, for the, I'm gonna have to side with April here. She, you were out here kissing Ray and doing stuff, so like she has the right to get jealous or mad just as much as you do because she's just handing her number out. She was single, so can't really blame her for this one, Jake. Sorry. You're validating everything that I fucking experienced in this past three weeks and it's pushing me away because like, Good. this is go not, even, go. not even not even five, ten minutes of being here. You can't even communicate in a calm tone. How mature. Because I sit there and I just faced you and tried to talk to you and you talked over what you do all the fucking time. Anything I say, you never listen. That's what I loved about Ray, because she actually listened. Okay. Hey, here's a tip. Um, don't bring up, uh, don't bring up other girls when you're, you know, with someone else. <laughs> if you're ever fighting with someone, right? Don't be like, hey, remember, remember Jacqueline? Yeah, uh, she did it better than you could. She listened, and you know what? She cooked better. Also, she had a bigger ass. Don't say that, because that, that's the, that's the death blow. That's the, uh, that's one of those. Uh, Jake was wrong for that one. Jake, you wrong for that, bro. <laughs> so, we meet back with Madeline and Kobe, the, the whitest couple. That's what they are. I was just with somebody that had all of the qualities that I had been nagging at Kobe for not having. But me and Kobe have a magnetic, undeniable chemistry. Now, this is a question that I would like to ask. If your chemistry is so good, why the hell did you need to go on one of the worst shows of all time? What? People out here are just saying shit now. Uh, you know, Randall was really good, but like, hubby has got like my heart. And, but Randall, if you come to, maybe we could do it three way. I'm just thinking. I wouldn't touch two boners at once. Some blindfolds here, two of them. So y'all both blind. They're yeah. using feathers and like, what the fuck they, is this shit? Well, Zay, clearly they were both playing blindfolded pen pals. Duh. It's where you put the mask over your face and then you take the feather and you write an old note in Shakespearean English. Like, how doth thou do to death? Clearly that's all they were doing. To myself. Yeah. By the way, I did get these for you. Same. So anyway, we revisit Madeline and Kobe. And things are going okay until Madeline realizes Kobe kissed that one girl. Remember that story, that never-ending story about Zay and Kobe? Well, it's back. And Madeline finds out about it, and she is pissed. Why are you shaking your I was in Kobe's bathroom and, you know, happened to flip through his Apple Watch. Con Madeline goes through people's stuff. I don't care if that's your partner, unless it's uh, consent. 
you're not going through this stuff. I'm not going through my girlfriend's phone. If she says I can do it, I'll do it. If she doesn't, I won't. Also, goddamn, what a techno what a technological way <laughs> to find like out someone's been doing things. I did a quick little scroll, scroll, scroll. I don't know, you know, any of these girls' names. Who Kobe? What who the hell is mom? Who's that? Who's this? So I went through his message thread with one of these girls and it was someone that he made out with and didn't tell me about. Not even. He told this girl we had an open relationship. You've been FaceTiming her and calling her? Yeah, she's been talking me through this shit. Only Kobe would be a man who would stay with another girl after leaving his original girlfriend and then still find another girl who has nothing to do with the show and still FaceTime her and call her after meeting her in the club because even though she just wanted a one night stand, he wanted emotional support. That's like going to a drug dealer and asking him for a bank loan. It's not really the smartest thing. Do you know what I mean? Really silly. As soon as I saw those messages, I felt betrayed. So anyway, after that big, you know, conversation, Kobe actually leaves, which is the first time he did the non-something. Usually he's just waiting, sitting at the door crying, but he actually left and he didn't come back till the next morning. I'm gonna call you back and let me know where you're at. We really need to talk. I have no idea where he went last night or what is going through this man's head. Hey, Kobe. You know, sometime later on the day, Madeline actually gets worried about Kobe and is like, where are you? You haven't messaged. Ray comes over to comfort Madeline and then Kobe walks in the door with a backpack on and he doesn't even acknowledge when Ray's like, hey, Kobe. I don't know what he's been smoking. I feel like he went out, you know, with the wrong type of dudes the other day and popped something and is walking around like a zombie. I just want you to. Yeah. You're. You're a strong person and you know how to advocate for yourself, hey. so I feel like you'll do good with that. Hey, Colby. What's up? Hey. Just Bye. trying to get some yeah. sleep. Hey, what's up? Hey, man, I'll see you guys later. What's up, baby? It's 8.30 in the morning. He's trying to get some sleep. I'm in your spot. No, you're fine. You're good. <laughs> Love you Bye, you're awesome. No, no, you're on my spot. Nah, I'm going to sleep on the couch. Fuck that. Oh, you stay right there, lady. Ooh, this is nice. What do they call this? A cow? Footstool. Well, I, be, I better, I, you know what? I feel like I'm going to sleep here more often. The way Madeline treats me. I think we were really need to discuss last night and where we're at right now. I think we should too. I just don't think right now is a good time to do that for me. I get that you're tired, but I'm exhausted. Now is not a good time for me. Oh, uh, I don't think now is a good time for me. Shop is closed. Oh, uh, why don't you talk to Colby Bryant in the morning? Whoosh, swish. I'll see you later. You're becoming more patronizing and you're making me want to walk out of this without you because I think I would be better for it. I think you'd be better too. Damn! Whatever Colby did, he turned from sump to pump. I like it. Uh, Colby, uh, pro? Went from sump to pump, evidently. Wow. I don't know what happened. I don't know what he drank. Maybe some pump juice. Ugh, sounds wrong. Madeline has been the one who is the, the aggressor in the relationship. She's been the one holding the power dynamic. Kobe has been on the back foot for most of the time. Now, Madeline is sensing the struggle. And I think every relationship revolves around that sort of balance. Or at least, I mean, it's never going to be 50-50 ever. I don't think so. But you have to have something close to that, you know? And I could finally, I could say that Kobe's getting there. I'm trying so hard, and I deserve more. You deserve a lot more than me. I'm not worth it. Damn, she looked to the heavens for that. <laughs> Can we slow that one down? She's like, Lord have mercy on his soul. She, she just looked like she was searching for answers. The great equation of the earth. Where's Terrence Howard when you need him? Okay, but you're not worth it, but it's still my fault that everything happened. Being in this experience has taught me I, I just want to marry Ray. We go back to a different couple, Ray and Zay. And uh, Zay is now under the impression that he just wants to marry Ray. He wants to finally tie the knot. He's good for it. And he is now trying to make a good impression on the mom. But as we all know, Zay cannot go more than five minutes without fighting something. So here goes. Freaking just one of my guy friends. If Some I stay with that person for three... Well, just go ahead, cut me off and... Go ahead. No, please keep talking. Please. No, it doesn't matter because we wasn't supposed who said, to. Who said what you had to say doesn't I'm, I'm matter? Right. I just, I love how he's like, yo, my plan to make sure I leave a good impression on a Ray's mom. 
A few moments later. Go ahead, go ahead, go. You talk. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just here. I'm just here. You know, everybody gang up on me. That's what it is. Like within five minutes, he just turns against everyone. You can't possibly be leaving a good impression by this, Zay. Yeah, nobody's coming out of this being like, oh man, poor Zay. Do you know why she interjects? Because I won't be hurt if I don't. Oh, whoa. Okay, can I tell you something? Look I at mean, me. Look, can, Zay. Yeah, I got whatever I got. I don't. Yo, yo, man, you already said, man, I don't even know, but Zay, can you look at me? No, I don't even know what I'm saying. I don't even want to look at your ass. You ain't shit, bitch. What a beautiful, beautiful man. You know what? These people are around my age, and I just feel, firstly, I'm not in a relationship for that long at the moment. That's crazy. Secondly, I feel like if someone gave me an ultimatum, I'd be like, bitch, you ultimatum yourself. You should leave. Uh, and thirdly, I just can't take the fact that people fight like this, like if you're with a relationship with someone, don't be fighting like that with them. You gotta find someone who you can at least get along with more than you don't get along with them. It's hard to fight with someone every day. That's just draining off your energy. She said because she wants to be heard. Is that a, is that a non-negotiable for you? So, things are going great with the couples as we can see, but now we move on to April and Jake. Things are going swell, except they're not. Well, that, do you understand how that's so frustrating for me? Because you were drunk. I came over here, you are passed out, your phone was unlocked, and I opened your phone and I went through it. Oh, wow, okay. What is it with these girls and going through people's private shit? Bro, this, what is this crazy? You know, we're dating, so I'm just gonna go through all your personal shit. I also went through your underwear, I sniffed it. You know what? I think there's another girl on that, you know? I, I smell like... Jake, I'm crazy. <laughs> Let's start off by, my name is April. I'm a psycho bitch. I, well, if I don't have to say it, then, you know, con, April, psycho B. I found videos on Jake's phone filming this close up to Ray's ass doing this shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's demonstrating it. Wow. Okay. Nobody even told her, but she demonstrating it. God damn. She really does go the extra mile, doesn't she? And I am psycho and I airdrop them to myself. I, I don't trust April at all right now after what she just did. Why did you airdrop them to yourself? What are you gonna, what, what is this? I airdropped them to myself so later on I can look at it and, 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 and see what you're seeing so I can also get uh, hard and you can touch my boner. But really, I, uh, yeah, now I have a, a Ray and she doesn't even know that I'm, I got her on my phone, but I got some scandalous stuff about her. What a crazy lady. <laughs> Oh, by the way, uh, can I just brace yourself? This is the first and only time I think you will ever see an angry twerk. And it is every bit as good as you think it's gonna be. Just look at this. There is no fucking reason to have videos of bitches doing fucking this at the club. God damn. She's like angry twerk. I've never seen it before. I just never seen someone like just... <laughs> I can't even do it. Can we get a pro for angry talking? I think she just came up with something that is uh, weirdly uh, erotic, I guess. That's fucking cheating. That's and not then... cheating, because it was a joke. You didn't know the behind the story. I wasn't just filming your ass for no reason. So I've been back with Colby since Sunday, and he had gone out and he said a girl walked up to him and kissed him. So we're going three for three here. Madeline and Kobe are now at dinner and Madeline invites her friends. The same friends who talked bad about Kobe while Randall was there are now there and they are just the echo chamber yes woman to Madeline. And unfortunately, that is exactly what happens. Everyone sort of picks on Kobe and it's really hard to watch because I think it's very annoying and sad. If I was in that position, I would probably want to call up and die. So this is not easy to watch. Honestly, put so much aside for your ass, for you to question me now. Then fucking leave. Walk. Do us both off. the favor. How about hold off the tequila a little bit and then maybe we can have a discussion. Bye. I feel like this is a, a white fight. <laughs> How about you just walk? And then he like leans over. How about you hold off on the tequila and then maybe we'll talk? How about you hold off on the drugs, you crack smoker? How about you, how about you hold off on that? It's just a weird, like, I don't even get this fight. But also you can see the, um, the evil lady, the witch lady who should be a Disney villain reacting as if Kobe is a Stalin or like, I don't know, one of the world's utmost terrible people. The way that she would react, you think that he was causing World War Three, Four, and more. So, ugh. That's ridiculous. It's oh. all come back to you blaming me, and I'm over it. When have I blamed you? <laughs> when have I blamed you? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's, you need friends like that. That's what I need. I need a girl to come up to me and be like, uh, Leo, you just, like, 
people with a fat ass. And then all my homies are gonna be like, what? What? Drop the mic and walk out, fucking Houdini. I don't know. Oh yes, Houdini, famous for dropping mics and walking out. Yes, he was an escape artist, but he was an even better MC, like Hamill. He he couldn't touch that. I don't think Houdini reveals his tricks, and that's what you fucking just did, oh. you dumbass. Hi. Ow. Ow. Again, Houdini, escape artist, not, not magician per se. Does nobody know who Houdini was? Are we just gonna misreference people? How about you act like Mike Tyson and drive away? But he's demanded this ultimatum for me, and I have really done everything that I could to get myself ready to prepare myself. Why does she look like she's standing in an upright coffin? Like she's gonna be mummified. What, what is this? I've done everything for Kobe. <laughs> My friends need to come hug me. For marriage with him. Are you good? Can I have a hug? Are you okay? I'm fucking gonna bear it. And instead, he's just, he's gone and, he's gone totally left field and created more doubt. It's a point where I can't, I cannot even defend him. He is making you feel bad because he keeps turning it on you. You're being brainwashed. I don't mean to be dramatic, no, honestly, but like literally, honestly, yeah. you are eating everything that he is feeding you. It's you are literally eating everything that he is feeding you. I don't mean to be dramatic, but literally, this is like the Hindenburg, but worse. Little, literally, literally, this is like the Titanic on steroids. Literally, this is like your own personal Pearl Harbor. I'm sorry, but hey, here's the thing. When you have a fight, do, do me a favor if you're in a relationship. Don't go to that echo chamber of friends that you have and take advice from them because they're going to end up leading you in the wrong direction. You need to discover for yourself whether you want to be in this relationship because at the end of the day, your friends are not the ones who you're in a relationship with. So them only seeing either the bad or the good or the ugly is not actually going to paint the full story. Only you and that other person know. So it's between you and them to decide as crazy as it is, I know you need to be doing that. Don't be listening to these goals. They're just going to boost your ego, stroke it, and do everything else. They, they're they not going to actually tell you what you need to hear. They're just going to tell you what you want to hear. Kind of insane. You're like, can I have 80 tequila ginger? I'll probably want a margarita for my second round. Anyway, this is the next day, and we have a surprise guest. Who's that Pokemon? Yes, it's the witch lady. What's her name? Alexis. And she is back because she's having her bachelorette party and she is still causing shit because she's a shitster. I'm so skeptical of Colby. I'm so confused well, why you're with well, him when you're like anywhere. this image and then there's him. Okay, so Alexis is now shit starring. She's telling Madeline that he could do better because she still hates Colby for some reason, even though she's married and Colby has nothing to do with her life and they only ever went on one date ever. This woman holds a grudge like no other. Oh my goodness. But she's also there to say that Jake and Ray seem to be a better match than April and Ray, which is uh, not her business. But hey, when in Rome, shit still. But I still have Zay and I yeah. love him. And you guys have to acknowledge that. April gets annoyed and is like, uh, can we move on? So I just want to say congratulations again on your engagement. Oh, can we have, what's the April walking out counter up to? I think it's three. Can we have a three on April walking out counter? This is the third time she's walked out of places. I love it. When girls get mad, they just walk the hell out. What are you going to do? You're still on the show. You have to come back, lady. This is awkward uh so the next couple episodes six seven and i guess eight just revolve around fuller mostly uh there's nothing too exciting that happens the couples do go on one expedition where they all go wine tasting and um all of the couples meet each other for the first time where they're reunited with their original partner nothing really happens there's a little bit of jealousy where there's a couple looks here and there besides madeline and kobe everyone else is pretty okay there it is that's money so that's the thing so that that happened uh they were doing like a little wine tasting uh april and uh kobe had a little connection he threw a grape into her mouth and uh, madeline said uh yeah if you throw another grape into her mouth you're not ever gonna put your grapes into my mouth and she got angry at him because yes it's called the ultimatum and it's about couples learning how to be more okay with each other but it's also about toxicity and staying jealous because we're on seven and eight episodes and nobody's really improved at all i just want to make sure that um randall is being fully transparent about 
his feelings for Madeline. I would just like to know if it's deeper than um, than what he's told me. After the great date, the next two people to fight are, of course, Randall and Shanique, because Shanique is like, uh, how, how did you really feel about Madeline? Even though she's not present in their lives anymore, Shanique needs to know. And also, can we remind you that Shanique gave Zay the suck? But nobody's gonna bring that up. I think you want me to say something that I hated about I'm Madeline. I think that's what you want me to say. Well, how that should, how should that even equate to what we're going through right now? Maybe that's why it's hard for me to explain what she needs to work on because we had a good experience. Right. So yeah, apparently uh, Shanique was mad that Randall didn't seem to have many problems with Madeline and just by him having a good experience, she's now annoyed and she ends up saying F the ring many times. And that's how I feel when I watch the movie Lord of the Rings. So I, I, I agree with her, but for the wrong reason. Do you <clears throat> Meanwhile, Zay and Ray have problems of their own because Zay is feeling kind of shitty that Ray even got intimate with Jake. And now he's going out with his boy to pate. Up round four, he's still not home, so I call him four times and he doesn't answer. I send him a text and it goes green and his location's off. He has never done that to me before. I'm so done. I don't want to do this. Um, Zay goes out and then he doesn't return for the next day. And when he does return, Ray actually makes the decision to end the relationship. And this is the first couple on the show that actually goes through the process of breaking up during the show. For years, can you not talk to me? I know you might. Can you please talk to me real quick, please? I love you. It's kind of crazy, and I think that is uh, probably a good decision by Ray and Zay. Like, uh, whoever made the decision is pretty good, because, like, this is sort of what the ultimatum was. It was to see whether the couples were compatible, and as hard as a decision as it is, sometimes you gotta make it. Like, yeah, I, I ended a, a, a few uh, relationships, and it was never easy. It's probably one of the hardest things you could do. Because you spent so much time with that person that it becomes like, oh, what what was I doing when they weren't around? But at the same time, sometimes you get so complacent when you're with someone, you forget what you even want in life. What did I want before I met this person? Where are my goals? And did my goals disappear? Did my as aspirations disappear since meeting this person? Am I still on the path that I wanted to be? Or am I just complacent and happy that I have someone to look after me? And that might be the hardest thing to ever come to terms with. But especially in your 20s, teens, and I don't know, even 30s, it's probably a good decision. And I don't know, cut it off if it's not working for you because it gives you that much more time to work on yourself and then maybe find the right person. So it's a hard decision, but I think it's the right one. Anyway, Shanique and Zay meet up. After Zay breaks up or gets broken up by Ray. With Ray? On Ray? In Ray. <laughs> hey, stop hey. touching me with them things. <laughs> like, why are you touching me with them? Hey, you've gotten very comfortable with my feet. No. <laughs> the sound it made, you could really tell he was putting the effort into it. <laughs> You could really see the power of Zeus as he did it. I was surprised she didn't like get like a bunda concussion. I'm not, You're in, not in my and position. I, and you know what? I'm not. But as a woman, I would never be okay with that. Uh, but the, you know, happiness is short-lived when these two firecrackers meet up. There's a fight that is bound to happen. Shanique says that, you know, if Zay went out all night and didn't tell her that, and then just came back, she would be just as mad. To which Zay is like, you don't know me. I grew up with a hard life. I'm, I'm a hard... Hard knock life for me. And Shanique actually says some real, real shit. She basically tells Zay that he uses his hard upbringing as a crutch to avoid criticism and growth. And it is such an important thing that she says that. Of course, Zay doesn't take that to heart, but it's 100% true. And if there's one person that got it right, bang on the head, it is Shanique in this moment. So I've been give her a positive for that, for giving great advice. Because I think <clears throat> lots of people use their circumstance to victimize themselves, and then they just don't grow. They end up not growing, and then every relationship they're in, they're like, I don't know why it doesn't work. It's because you're not working on yourself. I don't even know Zay's life. I can 90%, 95% guarantee I had a harder upbringing. I can, I can almost guarantee it. And I don't use any of that. I do not talk about it. I do not care. I'm just making the best of my circumstances. I think that's what you need to do. You're so much better than everything that you've been through. So much better than everything you've been through. And sometimes I feel like you will lean on those things as a way for you to have a pass. I'm done with this conversation. 
kind of weird when you're the one getting walked out on, huh, Shanique? Oh, man, could you imagine if Randall did this? You'd probably smack him. You don't want to contribute to the conversation because all you want to do is walk off. Yeah, so Zay walks off and that's that. Uh, meanwhile, Ray meets with Jake and says that she's single. I broke up with him. Oh, shit. But, um, I do definitely need to give a boy a chance to try to make things work at the end of this. So Jake essentially says to Ray that, hey man, he's with April and he needs to just try and see if it works. And then Ray pulls out the last minute uh, ditch effort where she's like, yeah, everybody says that we're cute together. She just plants a little mustard seed in his head. Faith of a mustard seed, you know, it grows. Yeah, and Jake's like, damn, if April ever Fs up, I got a, I got a ray, I got a ray of hope. April, if you mess up by June, I'll have Ray, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Took me 20 minutes to come up with that. I think the biggest regret I had on this experience was probably going... So back to Kobe and Madeline. Uh, last I heard about them, Madeline was like, you need to leave. So I, I don't know why they're back together, but apparently they are. Well, I'm, I'm listening. Okay, don't speak until I'm ready for you to speak, please. Don't but talk let me to get me like that. Out. Why are you talking like this? You're being very get... rude. How could it be real? I told you that night what happened and when it happened. Uh, okay, so then they have another fight, fight number zillion and six, and uh, Madeline's like, it's not gonna work. I feel like every single time they talk, they end up saying, it's not gonna work. Can you please just break up if that's the case? It's Y'all are like one of those couples that everybody doesn't want to hang out with in the friend group because they're like, oh, they're just gonna fight and they're gonna ruin everybody's day. Please stay away. You guys are that couple. Please just end it and end the misery. Thank you. P.S. Shut up. Can't marry a man that can't accept responsibility for his actions. And now we come to the final episode, the ultimatum day. Uh, I've been blazing past these episodes because I am about done with it. They're meeting in a swampy lake where Shrek got married. As you can see, the water's all infested and muddy. That's where Shrek usually takes his poopoos. <laughs> Don't know why they met here. I have no idea. Netflix probably ran out of budget. We are just outside of Austin to witness the ultimatum coming to an end and some new journeys about to begin. So first of all, we have Shanique and Randall. So without further ado, Shanique and Mari Brown. Yes. <laughs> Um, at the end of the day, Shanique and Randall get married. Randall's like, I, uh, I want you to marry me. And Shanique says she's sorry that she, does, she doesn't listen too much to Randall. And I'm going to just rate the couples real fast. I give this couple a B plus. I think that's the highest grade that we're going to get because I think Randall is very cool. Like, you know, he's a level-headed dude. And um, he says all the right things. He's got his head on his shoulders. He wants to work on the right things. He still had this experience for Shanique and has learned from it. And I think Shanique has the ability to learn. I really think that even though she gets hot-headed pretty easily, her heart is in the right place. And, I, you know, I think they could really make it work. So I'm going to give them a B plus, And they're a very handsome couple as well. So that that just, that's good too. Um, good for them. Happy for them. Yeah, quick look at the ring to make sure that it's real. She's just like, oh, Randall, cool. But oh my God. 24 karat magic. The next couple is Jake and April. Hey, marry me or I'm moving the hell on. I want to be a wife, not gonna be with you. Like I want to be married. I tried to push every little bit of me to, to get to that point. I'm just not ready for it myself. And Jake says the hard thing, uh, I'm not ready for it. And that is completely, both of them are well within their rights to say that. They're both more than entitled. Unfortunately, it means that they're not gonna be together. And it's, it's kind of sad, but they end their two-year relationship. Love you. I do wish the best. That sounds very believable. I'll see you later. How you doing, gorgeous? Uh, then Jake leaves, and then he takes a walk in the woods, and he meets a ray of hope. I'm going to propose something to you. <laughs> two tickets. Anywhere in the world. Um, I'm going to give that couple a B. It's the only couple, I think, that uh, ends up like being together after the show without the other people. Because like Madeline would probably go get with Randall if she could, but Randall's already taken. So that's the only other out there that there was. This is the first time in the show that a couple has like ditched their partners to go for the new partner. And while I think, you know, it's all novelty cute, 
that Ray and Jake are together. I think it's nice because I've only ever seen them on the context of the show. I've only seen them be together for three weeks. I think it's way too early to be like, oh yeah, they'll make a perfect couple. They seem like a good couple. It could work. And also, he didn't try and marry her. He just said, let's travel the world, which is kind of better than, I've known you for three weeks. Let me pop the question and then pop your cherry. The next couple we have is Madeline and Colby. You look incredible, baby. Oh, how are you? You doing all right? Oh my God. Madeline Riley Bellatori, will you marry me? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Will you marry me? Would you make me the happiest man of all time? Will you marry me? Yeah. I have another question for you though. Yes? She said yes? Were you guys not fighting the whole forever and ever and ever? I don't, that's okay. I didn't, I didn't expect that. I honestly expected Madeline to be like, no, I need more time to think about it. I don't think I can wait another day. <laughs> Would you want to get married today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you do it? Today is an acknowledgement and a display of your oh pledge. Oh my to God, love they got another. an. Not just today. They got someone who's ordained. Tomorrow. Oh my goodness. Oh, they got Peggy Sue right, to marry them. You've committed yourselves to each other in marriage by the oh, exchange of vows. Therefore, with the authority vested in me, I do pronounce you are now husband and wife. And Colby, you may kiss your bride. They got literally married. They they didn't just get engaged. They got married right there. Oh, this should be illegal. This should be so illegal. Oh my. As soon as I saw this couple, I was like, they're le they're not leaving together, and they're the they're the couple that left together. Oh man, we just did that. My dad's gonna be so pissed. Yeah, that's how it ends. That's how, that's how, this is the 10 episodes. That's how it ends. My dad's gonna be so pissed. And guess what? I think the world is pissed. Uh, if I have to rate that couple, I'm gonna give them a F+. Plus. This is some bullshit. I don't think that I've seen a more mismatched couple. I feel like the amount of fights I've seen them have actually outweighs the good times I've seen. I've only literally seen them be happy maybe three times in the whole show. Everything else has been either him crying, her trying to bang Randall, or them fighting. And they suddenly got engaged and then married on the same day. That is, uh, that's the show. We went through 10 episodes. I sat through 10 hours of this bullshit. And the only other thing that uh, there is to show you is the reunion episode, which I will do if you guys like this video and tell me that you want to see it so in the comments below if you do want to see a reunion then just let me know i do read them and I'll, I'll make one if you want me to because honestly there's some bombshells in the reunion genuinely you're gonna want to see that in terms of reality tv of course you have to expect the shows to be cheaply made mass produced and the contestants to be wild and funky people write in things they manufacture drama to help keep the attention. But never has there been a show that is so mismanaged where real couples actually test their faith and people who are not actually comfortable with who they are go on a show and end up not learning anything and then the show ends. This is the ultimatum. Normally on a show like, I don't know, at least Love is Blind, you get to experience the fact that you're with someone and maybe you learn something about yourselves. With a show like The Ultimatum, you're going in trying to force someone to do something and then living with someone else almost as if to blackmail them into doing the thing that you wanted them to do. It's basically like saying, marry me, and if you say no, I'm going to go fuck someone else. That's what the show is. And it's such a shitty premise that I didn't think it was real until I watched it for myself. This is by far the worst uh, reality show I've ever seen. It's the worst thing on Netflix. I'm not even going to exaggerate it. I've watched a lot of crappy reality TV, and I think this is the absolute uh, shit show of all shit shows. I'm going to quickly rate all the characters on the show. Madeline gets an F because she's just a hot mess. Uh, I don't think she has much redemption quality at all. She's just terrible. Alexis gets an F minus. She's somehow worse. Nothing she did even mattered. Uh, Nate also gets an F because he's a douchebag and also very jealous. Allison slash Lauren gets a C. She at least knows that she doesn't want to have kids and is trying. She's been on episode half an episode. Colby, he gets a C minus. He's definitely a bit jealous. He's a bit simpy. He can be very caring, but he's also got a lot of issues when it comes to it. And I really think that behind the scenes he's probably more possessive than he lets on i do like him i think that he has room to grow and that his heart's in the right place but i really don't know about as a person 
Uh, Zay gets a D because he fights with everything and uses the crutch of him having a bad childhood to uh, be okay and get a pass for everything. Not really any redemption qualities in that. I've never seen him do anything good. Uh, Shanique gets a B even though she's always angry. I think that she does truly care and um, I think in the long run she would definitely learn and that she, that she really wants to. Ray gets a B as well because I think that she is genuinely caring. It's kind of hard but she did actually do the right thing she made the moves that she needed to make i haven't seen her do anything like abrasively bad april gets a c minus i'll give her a c she's honest uh she's a firecracker she really is out there but she knows that she's psycho so you can't really hold that against her and you know what you're getting with her it's not like she's trying to hide anything uh but she is very needy and clingy and if that's something you like then that's great and then we get jake who I think gets a B plus. He's been pretty good. He's uh, low key. Didn't really do anything good or bad. And then Randall, who I'm gonna I'm gonna give an A minus. Randall, the only thing, the only, the reason I gave him a minus is because he kissed Madeline. Yeah. Everything else is good. And of course, I didn't forget about Hunter, but the wall did. So he gets an A. He's just a cool guy, as far as I can tell. So that's good. Now that I've graded the people and uh, wasted at least two hours of your time. I am going to sleep and shut down Netflix. Netflix's prices have increased, but my love for them has decreased. Hey, Netflix, if you ever make a show, before I go, can you just make a show that's called Brown People? <laughs> Let's date them. Uh, but that is the video. Um, before I go, just like one more word of advice. Uh, relationships are hard. They're not something that you come by every day. In this day and age, <laughs> they're very rare to find real, honest, and good relationships. So if you find one, hold on to it. And if you don't, don't be afraid. Because it just gives you more time to work on yourself. And the more you work on yourself, the better you improve yourself. The easier it will be to find that person you're looking for. That's the best advice I can give. Thank you so much for watching the video. I can't explain how much I appreciate if you watched the whole thing. Um, I'm sorry it was so long. You can you can have a yell at me in the comments. I'll give you that. But if you like it, tell me that you like the long videos. Because that's also cool. I will see you on the next one. My health has been up and down lately. But... Uh, I really wanted to make this, so thank you guys so much. Love you all. Take care. And uh, the ultimatum is you subscribe, or I will kick you. She ain't even got an ass. She did a dash and bit a last. You know a dash and she know.